Why, hello, my friend, Rich Evans. Hello, Mike. What brings us here today? I noticed you didn't say my friend, Mike. Why would I say that? Exactly. <laughs> Why, Rich Evans, the last time we sat in these chairs was when we discussed band names for death metal bands. Some wonderfully ludicrous band names. Right, and while we may have been inaccurate in certain areas of, of our discussion, uh, it was mostly well received. But we did receive one lovely thing recently, a care package from Metal Blade Records. Oh my God. Apparently they watched our video and enjoyed it. And, and they had a sense of humor and... And sent us some albums, maybe trying to convert us into listening to heavier death metal music. They sent us a bunch of albums. That, that... Cannibal Corpse. I'll have to blur this. I gotta say, I usually love heavy metal imagery. This is pretty great. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Oh, King Diamond. I've heard of King Diamond. This is 89. Wow, that was a classic. Looks like Sting Joint Kiss. <laughs> Would you like to look at that? Yeah, I want to see the first one you had with the That's Cannibal Corpse. That's that's an awesome cover. Yeah, oh, Cannibal Corpse is known for their, their crazy you know, ass I covers. Mean, yeah, a, a metal band known for crazy covers, unheard of. That's a pretty cool cover, the skull with the red, <laughs> red schmears. Just like streaming ahead, full speed, yeah. It's like a bunch of like soldiers, soldiers, but but like playing like a string quartet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that uh, Vomitory? <laughs> is, uh, uh, That's the name. Yeah, Vomitory. <laughs> um, this is a bloody red marble vinyl. Two, oh, this is also limit, 226 out of 300. Um, now, I don't know if this is just uh, like a weird ancient symbol or if this is the band name in, in their death metal spelling. <laughs> That's hardcore I don't know what the band this is, but this is great. And we love all these records sent to us by yeah. Metal Blade. I have something else to show you too. What? Indiana Jones, The Complete Adventures. I see there's something under there. Now, I told you today, Rich, uh -huh. that you were arriving to the RLM studio to film a review on Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom with me. Uh-huh. But we're not gonna do that today. What, we're not gonna do that today? Nope. I know you've been sore at me for not being part of a different <laughs> review, and I'm gonna give you that chance today. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it's Star Trek The Motion Picture. This is a, the 4K uh, new version. I bought myself a 4K player uh, to watch this on. But we're not doing that. We're doing Temple of Doom. Oh. Sorry, you're never gonna talk about the motion picture. Oh, you prick. I'm actually relieved now because I haven't watched that in a while. And it was for a second, I was just thinking, oh my God, oh my God. You gotta put on the spot. Put on the spot. Right. I probably could do a half ass job of it. But let's do a whole ass job on the Temple of Doom. Well, good, my no. Yeah, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I wanted to read to you the official IMDb synopsis. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1935, Indiana Jones is tasked by Indian villagers with reclaiming a sacred rock stolen from them and rescuing their children from an iPhone factory. Probably not inaccurate. You know what? You know, I didn't know if that was going to land or not. It landed. Okay. Because if it didn't, you would have just sat there and rolled your eyes at me. Here's, here's, 
Here's my summary of the movie. You wanna hear it? It's a culturally insensitive haunted house. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is a movie uh, that everyone, including the filmmakers themselves, hate. <laughs> and I find it fascinating. Uh, I, I, I love this movie. Wasn't this movie made when like everyone was having their big divorce, their yes. big first divorce, Lucas was getting divorced. I know Spielberg ended up with Kate Capshaw, who right. stars in this. Yes, Lucas was definitely getting divorced and he admits that he was in a dark place when he wanted to make this movie. The story ended up, for whatever reason, uh, turned a lot darker, I think. We decided to go darker. Uh, part of it, I guess, as I was going through a divorce at the time, and I wasn't in a good mood. Spielberg, I know he, yeah, he met future wife Kate Capshaw on the set, which is nice because you see, like, there's some behind-the-scenes footage where they're like playfully flirting and stuff. So yeah, that's. I don't know what the, I'm speechless. You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like this you is wanna my go team. To, you want to go to the prom? Yes. You want to go to prom with me? You know, there was a love connection there. So Steven taught me how to scream. But I don't know if, if Spielberg had a first marriage before that. Maybe, oh, okay. Maybe, I, I really don't know. Um, but yeah, you can see them kind of being very flirtatious. It's cute. Uh-huh. I have to play with bugs. Game is set. Do the bugs. No. Do the bugs. No. Do the bugs. No. She promised me when she wouldn't do the snake, she'd do the bugs. Okay, I'll do the bugs. Do the bugs. <laughs> but yeah, Lucas was like, I want to make this the dark film. I want to make it the dark chapter. Um, it's going to be a, about an Indian death cult. And um, what's funny is that Spielberg was like, I just didn't care about this movie at all. <laughs> I didn't care about making it. <laughs> and uh, He's too busy flirting with the lead actress. He said, he like, you can tell he really liked the story for Raiders. Uh, I don't think he gave a shit about oh, the Oh, I can understand why Raiders was personal to him. Oh, sure. I was... I was embarrassingly old when I realized that movie's a, a Jewish revenge film against the Nazis. But I understand why that was personal for him. And then you get like the sequel idea. I mean, there's some Hindu temple thing. And he's just like, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So George came up with this idea that it was going to be about the Kali cult. And I had never done anything like that before, so I kind of kept nodding my head. Well, if you guys think that's that's a good idea, sure, I'll go along with it. Well, uh, Lucas said that he didn't want to do... That's why he made this... It's technically a prequel. Yeah. It takes place in 1935 when uh, Raiders takes place in 36. So it's a year before Raiders. And he said he did that um, because he didn't want more Nazis. And I, I think that's kind of why I like this, is that it's just... Uh, uh, these movies are based on like the old serials from like the 1930s, 40s, whatever, um, adventure serials, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have Adventure Man. That's where the term cliffhanger comes from because at the end of those, like the hero will be falling off a cliff and you gotta come back next week to find out how our hero gets out of this jam. How's he gonna not fall off that cliff? His car obviously just went over. And that's in Indiana Jones films. Yeah. They're, they're, they're paralleling shots and, you know, the end of this where he puts his hand up, you know, it's just like the end of uh, Last Crusade. It's, it's, it's adventure archaeologist man in kind of different regions of the world that we don't get in the other two films. It, it was like a statement that this is not one continuous story where the end of Lost Ark leads into this. It's like this man had an amazing life and he had a number of amazing adventures and they could be anywhere in time. He had, a, he had a gangster adventures in the late 20s. Or... It works It works for um, for both not having Nazis involved and it works for, yeah, exactly what you said, just some random adventure that he went on. Um, but then this movie didn't quite work out and it's like, no, Indiana Jones is a man who fights Nazis. Nazis. I hate these guys. Yeah, that's the, that's the uh, unfortunate, like, uh, cynical takeaway is like, oh, well, okay, let's go back to what worked before. One thing I will agree with you, though, is that the plots are very similar between this one and the first one. Mm -hmm. Remember in the first one, the Nazis were after the Ark of the Covenant. Right. This time they're after the Holy Grail. Right. We don't want to take another <laughs> Indiana <laughs> we're, Jones. We're done taking risks. He goes on a, a polar Arctic adventure and he, he meets uh, Inuits in northern Canada that worship... Uh, 
an ancient demon whale that comes out of the ground. Or a, a, a polar cra- bear god. A, a kraken. <laughs> Indiana Jones versus the kraken. <laughs> Something like that. Something completely batshit, right? Yeah. Uh, let's start it off in China. Let's go to India. We, uh, we've been in uh, Africa, mm-hmm. uh, South America in the opening of uh, uh, Raiders. No, yeah, they're, they're, let's, it was like, let's do everything differently up to and including the love interest. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, uh, well, they, they did a twist on the love interest in the third one, but that's a little, that's, the love interest in every film has been a little different. Except for obviously Crystal Skull, where she's exactly the same love interest as the first one, but that's... Crystal Skull <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> and also, we have, just as a side note, we have not seen the new one yet as of right no, now. No, we haven't. Crystal Skull is not good, but I don't think it's as, as bad as people say it is. It's, I think, in my mind, it's not franchise ruining. Crystal Skull is just forgettable. Part time. The dance number at the beginning? Did they use reverse footage for some of that dancing? Because I've never noticed that before rewatching that for this. It's when they all get up from the split. Yeah. I noticed that too. And it's such a weird thing. Like, why do they need to do that? Because I don't think uh, a dozen or so ladies could literally get up from splits. Do you need to show them getting back up? Or can you just cut some pizzazz. Cut the Willie singing for a second and then they're just back up? I don't know. It just seemed odd. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool, but it just seemed odd because I, I immediately said, that's reversed footage. Wait a minute. Another thing I noticed that was kind of odd, two Wilhelms. One Wilhelm is a reference. Two Wilhelms is just strange. The same Wilhelm? I think so. Maybe I, maybe I misheard it, but it sounds like um, when the guy on like the serving cart rams into the band, there's a Wilhelm. And then, like, two minutes later, when they're in the car chase in the streets and Indiana Jones shoots the guy in the head, there's another Wilhelm. Rich is referring to the famous Wilhelm scream. Ah! Um, uh, Which I assume everybody knows about at this point, but I guess I could If you're watching our material, our programming... You you probably probably know what that is. It's also the name of a band, a death metal band. It's called A Wilhelm Scream. I, they're a death metal band. I would not be surprised. I'm sorry, they're a black metal band. Ah! <laughs> Anything goes. Uh, so you're talking about audio stuff, sound effects. It's Luke's film sound effects, bro. Oh, God, the amazing fucking, fucking Ben Burt. Uh, ben Burt, yeah. Give that man all the Oscars. Uh, they probably, I'm sure he has a couple on his shelf. It's such a, it's such a small thing, but just like the champagne corks go off and just the sound that he uses for the gun shooting is, is just the perfect sound. Oh yeah. When the bullets ricochet off the giant gong. Oh <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh god, that's my, that's like that's some of my favorite music in the movie, and it's a sound effect. Yeah, the sound effects are amazing. There, I noticed one sound effect too. Uh, when the the pit opens up to reveal like the lava below, uh-huh. there's a lightsaber hilt ejection <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> you can hear it. Again. That's just Ben Burtt's like, what do I got? <laughs> Throw it in there. Throw it in there. Mix it in with my my coffee pot going off. <laughs> but yeah, pssh, it's that same sound. Because he's got all the Lucasfilm stock sounds. And there's that that engine stalling sound effect that they use in the Morning Falcon. And... Oh yeah? Watch this. Watch what? Propellers start dying. Also, we have our, our our first hints of the crystal skull. Dan Aykroyd has a cameo. Oh, that's right. Yes. Ah, Dr. Jones. I'm R. Webber. I spoke with your assistant. Uh, we've managed to secure three seats. I've always wondered about the Dan Aykroyd cameo. 
It's like, hey, I want to have a cameo in your Indiana Jones. I love maybe, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Maybe Earth. he said, yeah, I really liked Raiders. Can I have a cameo? Because they never, I guess Dan Aykroyd was too big a star, and they didn't want to make a thing of, like, here's Dan Aykroyd's cameo, because there's yeah. no close-up on his no, fucking right, face. Right, right. You can just tell it's him because of his fucking voice. Yeah, and it's all like uh, ADR too, because it's so far away. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure it's on the. I didn't watch the commentary track. I didn't. Like, I didn't I sh- Probably should have. This is one. No, this is one. I was just proud of myself. I, as a child, I recognized that was Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. I was very proud of myself when I was a kid. That's good. Yeah. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I'm proud of you now for noticing that it was. Dan I observed Aykroyd. a thing. And so Lucas is was going through a divorce. He's, he's angry, he's bitter, and he wants to make a dark chapter, and he says he wants it to be very much like Empire, uh, which is the darker chapter of the Star Wars trilogy. Uh, and there's a scene in this that's very similar to Empire. It's the scene when they arrive at Pankot Palace, and they're greeted by Chatter Lal, the, uh, like... Uh, I think he's the Prime Minister, officially, yeah. of under the Maharaja, who's yes. like the, the Spiritual monarch, monarch yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm Chatur Lal, Prime Minister to His Highness the Maharaja of Pankot. But Chatur Lal greets them, and you've got Indy, uh, Short Round, and uh, Willie, Willie Scott there, and he greets her, and he grabs her hand, and he thinks he says, and, uh, I'm enchanted. I'm enchanted. And then Indiana Jones is a little, like, taken okay. aback, and she's like, ooh, enchanted. And of course, it's very similar to the scene in Empire when Lando greets Leia. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I think it's almost shot from the same side. One of the same actors. <laughs> yeah, where, where Indy's taken down a notch. I watched this more than Raiders. Okay. I don't know why. I just loved this movie. I would watch it so many times. It was different from a lot of the things you would see. Right. And Raiders was like, okay, I, I watched it later on and I really very much appreciate it. I, I can't share your experience there. I think Raiders is still one of my favorite movies of all time. It's superior yeah. to this film, but this film, like, and then Last Crusade and Raiders, they they feel too safe. This one feels like, it's like the, the black sheep. Uh, nobody wanted to make it. Everybody hated it. You know, of all the Raider indie films, Temple of Doom is my least favorite. Audiences hated it, but it has some of the greatest, like, memorable Indiana Jones moments. It's it's a strange movie. I think it I think it starts very weird. How Indiana Jones gets roped into the Pancot Palace adventure is very strange. But I think once the adventure starts proper, I I love I will say I love all of the set pieces. I, I, I love the spike trap. I, 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 I love that, you know, the, the, the tension is that scene is getting this woman who doesn't like bugs to pull a lever. Like, that's all she needs to do. But, ee, she's too busy screaming. I know people hate Willie. I like Willie Scott. That's my controversial opinion. That's, I share this controversial opinion. I, I love the, just the fucking set where the Shankar stones are and they got the lava pit. That set is fucking amazing. I, he, you go from that to the the, the minecart. I love all of the set pieces. Once like the you get to the halfway point of this movie, on I love. Well, yeah, well I, I the the opening set piece in the nightclub, Club Obi Wan. I love that the I, airplane bit. I the raft is my least favorite stunt in any of the Indiana Jones movies. Oh sure. I hate it. I hate it to death when they jump out in a raft. It, it takes me out of the movie every time because I'm thinking. What's the, what's the plan? How is a raft supposed to save you? And I guess it does. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stunts Indiana Jones does that realistically, oh, sure. yeah, you'd be dead. But for some reason, I buy them all except for the raft bit. Yeah, Indiana Jones would be suffering from dementia from so many concussions. He'd be the first in. documented case of CTE syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, but being punched in the head 7,000 times. <laughs> uh, but sure, that, 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 it doesn't matter. It's, I get that that's a bit cartoonish. Yeah, well, here's the thing, everything's a bit cartoonish. Even, you know, you say this is the dark one, but it's so cartoonish compared to Raiders. Well, here's the difference that I noticed. Um, I've noticed it before but it was more pronounced on a a more recent viewing. You take Raiders or even Last Crusade, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that Spielberg cares about the story and the film more 
because during exposition scenes, they are exposition scenes. Like Raiders, when they go into the classroom, remember, like all the students leave, and they're, they're talking about the Ark of the Covenant, and Indy's got the chalkboard, and that's all. Yeah. They're telling you what's going on. In this, every exposition scene is counter-edited with hijinks. For example, um, the big one is the, um, the dining scene, the big dinner scene where they're eating bugs and monkey brains. And they what. have the weirdest curry I've ever seen in my entire life. Right. It's, it's, I, gotta say, I gotta say, watching this as an adult, that scene made me super uncomfortable. We'll talk about that in a minute. But you have Indy, and he's talking with Chatter Lal and the, the British uh, admiral guy, right? Mm -hmm. And they're talking about the thuggy cult and the, the, the British revolt against the British 40 years ago or whatever. And it's all exposition, and it's intercut with wacky hijinks with uh, Willie Scott and Short Round and the bugs and goofiness. And then at the campsite, Indy's like, he, he gets the little piece of cloth from the starving boy mm -hmm. that, that explains the, the death cult, the um, uh, Kali, right, the Kali, whatever. And he's explaining it to Willie Scott and the whole time like the elephant trunk is like hitting her in the head and I'm like, what is he saying? I cut, Spielberg <laughs> didn't care about, about the plot stuff, you know? Yeah. He wanted, he wanted constant things going on just because he was like, oh, Indian, like, death cults. Whatever. I don't care about any of this. I don't care about let's any just, of this. Let's just have fun. Let's just have fun, yes. Part of that was because I was not exactly secure with the story, and I had I had always had some problems with the darkness, and I wasn't, I, I thought maybe I should, uh, I, I, need, I needed to be more spontaneous to try to put more humor in where it needed humor. And uh, even at the end of the film, he's like, he's like, with Raiders, we, we meticulously storyboarded out the action scenes at the end with the truck chase and all that. And he's like, with this, he's like, I just showed up. I didn't do as many storyboards on Temple of Doom as I did on Raiders. All the big set pieces I storyboarded, but some of the in-between action fights, I just sort of left it to all of our first impressions, seeing the set for the first time and getting ideas and just figuring it out. He didn't give no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I like the fact that w the opening is so different. Raiders opens with, uh, you know, the, the, the outlaw Indiana Jones, you know. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's shrouded in mystery. He's backlit. You, you only see his, like, chin, you know, and he's a like, click of the gun, all that kind of stuff. You don't really see him. And he's, he's got the silhouette. And this, he just, like, sits down and he's in a white tux. He's like, hi. Well, this is that was the, the the James Bond scene. Yeah, there's a little bit nod to that, I suppose. Because I guess the you know the origins of Indiana Jones is like Spielberg wanted to direct a, a, a fucking James Bond movie, and James Bond did not want Spielberg to direct a James Bond movie. I don't I don't know why. And and Lucas is like, well, I got something else. It's an action thing. It's but gonna be better. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. The idea of opening it with him on an adventure, like going into some kind of like cave, like stark what, contrast to the Peru stark opening. Stark contrast, yes, of exactly. Raiders. Um, yeah, and also it gives it that visual variety because the whole movie is very brown and red, and you know, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, it's all very monochromatic, like. But, and so you have that, those scenes in the nightclub and it's everything so modern and uh, black and white. Makes good for uh, uh, editing together a trailer. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's different too because Raiders, it's like he's, he's on a quest. The US government, I think, says go and find the Ark of the Covenant before Hitler does. Yeah. This, he's just making some money selling the cremated <laughs> remains of a, a Chinese <laughs> emperor. Everyone in the other films is there purposefully. Like, he goes and seeks out Marion because uh, he's looking for the, the Staff of Ra. The, 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 the headpiece the of the Staff of Ra. And uh, this, it's all just short round Willie Scott. It's all incidental. Why does, can you tell me this? Why does Willie Scott get on the plane with Indiana Jones? Uh, I know, I know it's because they needed Willie Scott to be with him on this adventure. 
But in character, why does she get on the plane with Indiana Jones? Well, uh, Lao She is literally right behind them, and they've been shooting guns at them the whole time, so... Yeah, but he's shooting guns at Indiana Jones. He doesn't really care about Willie Scott. You keep it a go. I find it another. <laughs> She's getting on the plane with her kidnapper. Theoretically... Who just groped her in the car. Uh, theoretically, <laughs> Lao She, uh, if she didn't get on the plane, Lao She could have just shot her dead for knowing too much. Uh, maybe, maybe. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, you know what, that's flimsy, but I'll buy it. See, these are things that could be solved with a line. Yeah. Right, like, I'm yeah. not getting on that plane with you, honey. He's gonna shoot you, you've seen too much. Well, Lao Shea knows what, uh, you know. The, the fuck it, we gotta. You can't, you can't come back here, this is your only way out. Lao Shea's right there. Or just, um, uh, Lao Shea fires, uh, his henchmen fire a couple shots at them. I'm not getting on that plane with you. <laughs> The bullet knocks her hat off or whatever. <laughs> Woo! Get on the plane. <laughs> it's like Indiana Jones grabs the raft and she says, we're not sinking, we're crashing. And he's like, and he could say, I know, honey, but I'm gonna pull this string and we can jump out right at the right moment. <laughs> and then, you know, Shardy, run up there to the cockpit. Tell me, tell me when we're heading over that, that mountain top. Okay, Dr. Jones. <laughs> and he runs up and he's like, tell us when uh, we're right over the mountaintop. If we time it exactly right, we can jump out and we'll have not too far to fall. You know, it's just for this fucking, fucking fun. <laughs> jump out of the plane in a raft. I hate that. Sorry, Mike. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna sway me there. I hate that bit, but okay. It, but, but the point I'm making is, the, the stark contrast between this and Raiders. I think that's why I like this, because risks were taken. They said, we're gonna make a sequel to Raiders. Sequels vary, uh, that's why Empire's so great. Yeah. You know, um, sequels are often very, very similar to the originals for S obvious reasons. Especially in that era. Yeah, you make a sequel and you don't wanna take a risk. You wanna kind of repeat the success of the first one uh, Empire, totally different than Star Wars. Yeah. Temple of Doom, totally different than Raiders, right? Uh, you know, in almost every way. And so that's why I like Willie Scott, and I like the short rounds there. And it's just like, you, we didn't bring back any of the characters from the first one. We just, he's just on a random ass adventure. And a series of, of wacky uh, events. A Rube Goldbergian sequence of uh, events. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, Indiana Jones. Lead him to a river that, that leads him down into an a, a impoverished Indian village where their children <laughs> have been kidnapped by a, a thuggy death cult. <laughs> and their magic stone has been stolen, which has robbed the village of, of its precious life. And Indiana Jones is not doing a thing uh, where he's, you know, looking for an artifact. He, you know, it's, they are bad guys. And I, and I think Molaram has like some lines where he's like, oh, it's the scene when he's trying to force uh, Indy to drink the blood, the Kali blood. And he's like, he's like, first, once we get all the stones, we'll have the magic power of Kali. First, then the British Empire will fall then the, the Christian God will die, and then we will rule the earth. Yeah. Greater threat other than just... Uh, a village and a stone. The children of a village and their magic stone that instantly makes all the trees turn green? It's magic stone, it's fine. It's how magic stones work. Okay. I don't even know anything about magic stones. It, it doesn't but they take, glow yeah. and they make trees grow. Right, but not over the course of a season, you know, just instantly. Instantly, the whole village is, is, is brought back to life magically. Uh, so there is a worldly threat. That line is thrown in there, much like Hitler getting the Ark, having un, unimaginable power. Uh, it's like, well, okay. So Indy is trying to say, he's also saving the world, so they had a greater sense of threat. Uh, stakes raised a little. Could he have had a stronger character arc in this? Who? Indiana Jones. No, he doesn't need a character arc. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like almost too subtle. It's like that fortune and glory line. Because you get the sense, they don't emphasize it much, that he doesn't really care about the damn village. Like, yeah. 
he he wants he wants to find that stone. He wants that fortune and yeah. glory. But his 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 arc is when he he steals the three stones and he's like, okay, I got him. And then he hears, then he hears the, the, the kid getting whipped. And then he goes, oh gosh, uh, child slave labor. I got to do something. Got to draw the line somewhere. Yeah, right, right, right. And then he becomes enraged and throws the rock. <laughs> Hits the, the heavy right in the back of the head. That's a great sound too. And so, yeah, and that begins the adventure. It seems to me like the universal complaint about this movie is no one fucking likes Willie Scott. I think a lot of people watch this after watching Raiders 2, and Marion's great. Marion's probably my favorite love interest in the series, but Marion is definitely the strong, independent woman, and Willie Scott is the opposite of all of that. Willie Scott is shallow. Willie Scott is vain. She, she is selfish. Uh, she is not at all brave, and I kind of find that refreshing. She's not a likable character, but she's just... An interesting contrast to Indiana Jones and basically everybody else in this movie. And that was, I think that's supposed to be the joke, but it's just one that doesn't land for most people. It's something, honestly, that they avoid so much you never see it. And that is kind of what makes it kind of interesting, maybe? It's, it's also very, like, almost intentionally dated. Yeah. Like, if you're going to make a modern day version of an old like adventure serial, then you have a character like that. Here's the damsel in distress. Right, right. And it's the, like kind of a modern take on that. And d does her character arc in any kind of way? Not really. <laughs> her only real arc is that she doesn't completely hate Indiana Jones at the end of the movie. Yeah. She only somewhat hates him. There's chemistry between them. The, the, the romantic interplay between them is very different. Uh -huh. um, because you have Indiana Jones and, and Marion who have a past. He had sex with, uh, whatchamacallit, the Nazi spy, <laughs> Elsa? Elsa. In uh, Last Crusade, but he doesn't have sex with uh, uh, Willie Scott. They almost have, does, he almost yeah, does. Yeah, and that's, that's the five minute scene when, when you'll be back in five minutes. Like, there, there's an attraction. It's, for, it's when she, he first pulls her back. You know, he's like, he's like sticking the fork in her. And then Lao Shea pulls her away and she's <laughs> like, she kind of wants to go back to him. So there's a little <laughs> fun play there. And then they smooch when he, he's going to uh, swing down to get the, sh the Shankara stones. And then, um, so she, there's, there's obviously an attraction. It's very much a, a love hate kind of thing. Yeah. They have this whole moonlighting thing going on. Right. Uh, and, but, you know. Yeah, but he kidnapped her and put her on a plane and, and took her to an Indian death cult palace. Yeah. I get it. But, to her credit, uh, she, doesn't, uh, she doesn't put out when he, he, he uh, <laughs> insults her, you know? Yeah. But she'll never have better. I don't know. As a scientist, I don't want to prejudice my experiment. I'll let you know in the morning. I'm the best you'll ever have. He's like, oh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out in the morning. And he starts closing the door, and she's like, I'm not that easy. Well, the, the best part is when he runs back in after he's been attacked, and yeah, yeah. she thinks he's come to ravage her. Right. But he, <laughs> he's, he's looking to make sure there's not a thug in the room about the killer. I was so dumb when I was little. I didn't know what he was doing with the plant. <laughs> I'm like, why is he, what's he, why is he touching that plant? <laughs> and then now I'm like, oh, there's a draft coming in yeah. from a hidden trap door. It's not, it's not a deep romance. No. It's not a, a true connection, but it is an attraction. It's an, and it's fun yeah. to watch. It's playful. Yeah. It's playful. Um, I, I don't know if I would say it's like demeaning or misogynistic. Or I, I, I just think people... Think way Ch too much chill about out a bit. It's a movie. It's an Indiana Jones movie. It's, yeah, it's a play on an adventure movie. It's 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 borderline a comedy. Uh, real quick, John Williams' score. 
amazing. I, I want to point out, like, as much as uh, this is the dark one, this is the dark one. Like, his Temple of Doom, like, specific for this movie, parts of the theme, very upbeat. He may have been the only one who cared about making the movie. <laughs> but I noticed, too, like, like uh, in the minecart battle, like, before they get in the minecart and try to get away, uh -huh. Indiana Jones is, like, fighting the guy, uh, the you know, the heavy in this film, and on the rock crusher. Um, he's, he's flying around, whipping around, and the people shooting at him, and, well, that's after that, but uh, uh, Short Round's battling the Maharaja with the, the voodoo doll. That, that um, wonderful little dual shot where uh, yeah. Short Round's punching the Maharaja while Indiana Jones is punching the thug. But the, the inst instead of like, like today's like music, like action music, always just seems just like blanketed action music that just covers a scene. It's like un unmemorable. But this, it's like he's he's weaving in like the themes, like Willie Scott themes. Da, na, na, na. Yeah! So when they cut to her and she jumps in the cart, she gets out, and they, her theme comes up for a second, and then it goes back to short round, and his theme's there, and Indiana Jones. And it's like it's like done with such care and precision of like scoring it to what's happening on the screen, and it's 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 very well done. He was the man for a reason. I know, still is. Yeah, even at ninety-seven, he's still the man. And also, this movie is what kind of like made me interested in editing um, and aware of it. I hmm. should say because they're they're. This is like the classic example of like the Spielberg time stretch. Oh. Um, very specifically the uh, rock crusher, you know, that, that tense moment, the, the last couple of seconds. Like, where, where Indiana Jones keeps going back in time three seconds. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. there's the feet, uh, <laughs> his head's there, and it's like an inch away. And, uh, <laughs> that, um, and also uh, when Willie is in, you know, the human uh, uh, deep fryer. <laughs> um, they, they open the gate, the, they open the concrete doors to lead to the lava flow below. Cause they're inside of a mountain. There's lava down there and they start lowering her, you know? And it takes forever. Uh, it stops a couple times, but then at the end, Indy has temporarily defeated the bad guys and they start pulling her back up, right? Mm -hmm. She gets all the way back up to the top and then something happens. Uh, I think, uh, oh, Chatter Lal comes he out comes with the knife. He comes up with the knife behind. And, and then they start fighting and then she starts going back down and within like two seconds, she's all the way at the bottom and it's enough for him. He punches him and he lands on the, the little thing and, they, and it's just boom. It's like, I'm sure if you like literally timed out the rotations of that thing, there's probably like 50 rotations to get her down to the bottom <laughs> during the first bit. And then the end, when they need her to, to just barely hit the lava, it's probably like five rotations. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I know. But, but that cinema, <laughs> that's Spielbergian magic. It doesn't make sense, but it sure is uh, uh, edge of your seat entertainment. And that's where I remember thinking as a kid, it's like, She's all the way back up at the top. He's got plenty of time. Oh, well, she's all the way down at the bottom? <laughs> How did that happen? But it's exciting. And you could you could fix that. You know, you could have him fighting. Oh, you don't need to fix that. Fighting it's, him longer. That but, works. But it works, yeah. Okay, that voodoo doll? Is that the same miniature they used in the minecarts? <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> There's, there's a couple shots. Oh, it's a fantastic sequence, the minecart. It influenced a lot of shit that happened after it, especially in video games. There's a couple shots where you'd really see that there's little dolls in a tiny little minecart. There's stop motion claymation. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that some of it's stop motion because they're just kind of like bobbing around awkwardly. In a, couple, I, I, in a couple of shots. I think they, yeah, they were stop motion in a couple shots, but I'm sure there were other shots where they were just miniatures. Yeah, yeah. It's a combination of, and that's a lot of the effects in this. 
uh, green screen. Um, the worst green screen is when they're on, on the raft going down the snow mountain. It's like green screen is like yeah, yeah, not good back then. It's like the I don't know the speeder bike chase in Jedi where it's like all those miniature shots look great, but when Luke and Leia are on the speeders, it, it just looks bad. It's the kind of thing that I believe just work better with dark backgrounds. Definitely. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, definitely. And it doesn't quite hold up. But so you have the, them on green screen. You have an actual full scale set um, that they they built in a circle. Like, do they use like one of those circle roller coasters, the kitty roller coasters? I think like so. a base? Yeah, they use something like that. Um, and every they would change the lighting setup every time they would need to reuse the same area to make it look different. And then you have miniatures. Uh, miniature mine carts, uh, claymation, the little tiny dummies. Um, so it's, it's a combination of old school practical effects that, that did everything. And then the same with the water kind of like rushing down the, you know, obviously all that's in miniature. Yeah. It doesn't look the best. Nothing, nothing is be like believable as far as being realistic. Like the mine carts, what kind of crazy ass mine carts are those? How do those function as mine carts when they're like designed to jump over no, Rich, they, and rivers of lava. I don't. I don't. Left tunnel. The the right tunnel it, was out of commission. What, is, what does this do? What is this? How does this function? Where's it going? It, it leads. It leads to a hole on the edge of a cliff. That's the bad tunnel. Why did they build the bad tunnel? The bad tunnel went into disrepair. <laughs> they they will go through all those boards with skulls on them. <laughs> don't go. Don't go. Because the tracks <laughs> fell falling apart. And and like like the water like. It's a bucket of water, but somehow it's an ocean of water by the time it goes through. The... And I don't really care because the action sequences are fun. I'm just pointing out that... It's a good amount of water. I'm just pointing out that those sequences highly like cartoony yeah. and stylized. The water probably would have dissipated much sooner than the length of the track. Yes. The amount of time they were on the track was like five miles of track because how, how long that action sequence is. But... Yes, the water would have probably just all like dissipated yeah. everywhere. And Moleron would have just looked around. Wow, that was useless. Whoops. Here's something I'm kind of curious about. Why does Indy choose the left tunnel? He's just not listening to short run. But why does he even bother doing that? Because he has to choose one tunnel. They come to a fork in the road. I guess. I guess. Okay. I, you could, and again, this is, you could have had, and you go, what? What did you say? Short round? I didn't hear you. Over all the fucking sounds of the scrapey mine cart. <laughs> I'm just going to use my own judgment and say that Indy didn't hear him or did, just heard, blah, 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 blah. Trying to do my thing here and get us the fuck out of here. Shut up, short round. You're just a fucking child. I'm not going to listen to you. I, I love short round, too. What, what happened to short round? That has always disturbed me. Especially because I know this takes place before Raiders, so like, what happened? Did, did Short Round die on our unseen Indiana Jones adventure? Did he get that kid killed? No, no. I, I'm, I'm gonna bet, and people out there probably know at this point, but I'm gonna bet Short Round is in the new one. I hope so. I hope so. As a cameo. I, I want to see Short Round in the new one. Because that's the, that's the thing, Rich. That's the thing this movie never did. Remember this? Remember this? Remember, remember this? <laughs> Sala, he's back. <laughs> well, this is the first time we meet Sala. I just want to know that Short Round didn't die. No. Maybe he died in like Peru before Indiana Jones got to the cave. <laughs> oh, sure, he was on that adventure. <laughs> so, yeah, he got hit by the poison dart early on, and we just never speak of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. He gets back and like a scene we don't see before like the classroom. Brody's like, "What happened to your your Chinese child, Indiana Jones?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> speaking of short round, uh, I just wanted to uh, George Lucas's original uh, initial idea for Indiana's sidekick was a virginal young princess, but both screenwriters and Spielberg disliked the idea. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> I'm glad they didn't go that route. What? Uh, I'm gonna guess, well, Short Round was like homeless. He was like a street kid. Yeah. Um, and uh, Indy knew him. 
See, I've, I've, Eight I've had this debate with you or Jay about whether or not it was just happenstance that they fell into Short Round's car. No, no, I think Indiana Jones says that he met Short sure, Round, like tried to steal something from him. Was that how it worked? Yeah, but he wasn't like Indy's getaway driver for that. I think he was. Short Round, <laughs> step on it. He's got the shoes ready. He's waiting outside to be the I getaway. I thought short round was either just no. driving a taxi or stole that car. No, my my inter like you say, you see things and you you explain okay, them in your okay. head. I think he was the he was always meant to be the getaway driver. That's so why he had he had the shoes ready to go. And then he sees Indiana Jones falling out a window, and he's like, Oh God, I better get over there and rescue Indy. I don't know. Uh, I don't think Indiana Jones would have a they, child as a getaway they driver. They definitely know each other before that. Oh yeah, I agree. He's like, get us out of here, short round. But see, that's the thing, it's like, I uh, initially I thought, oh, it's just some kid who stole a car and they fell into the car and Indy's just like, he just gives them that nickname. <laughs> get, you short round, get us out of here. And then they go on an adventure. But then in the, in the camp scene, he's like, he's like, yeah, I met Shorty 12 years ago. <laughs> Before he was even born. But before he was born and we, he caught him picking my pocket and fucking somewhere and Shorty's parents were killed in the bombing of uh, Shanghai. Yeah, some some incident where uh, Shorty's parents died, and so I just thought they fell into his car, and Indy happened to know him. <laughs> I I don't believe Indiana Jones would have hired or asked Short Round to be his getaway driver. That to me seems ludicrous. So it's it's less ludicrous that randomly Short Round. <laughs> Happened to be driving around. Like, Indy had the waiter guy. The waiter guy was his accomplice, right? Yep, yep. And uh, we, I followed you on many adventures, Indy. Uh, but mostly just this one. But most, I will never be spoken of ever again. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. Uh, so maybe that guy was going to be the original getaway driver and that guy called up short round? <laughs> I, just got, I just got shot. Um, can you pick up Indy when he, uh, he and time out, it perfectly? He took out his very early cell phone. Yeah, right. Yes. He's on the ground like dying. Short round. I have a feeling that Indy's going to jump out of a window behind a rolling gong that's being machine gunned at in about four and a half minutes. I don't know how I know this, but I have a feeling all this... Indy fell in the car. He just happened to know short round. That's my takeaway. Yeah, away. that makes far more sense. Just shut up. Anyways, uh, quick mention that this is one of the films that helped to create the PG-13 rating. It was not actually rated PG-13, it's rated PG. It's kind of insane. It's insane. It's still rated PG. The only reason this isn't rated R is because of the sheer clout of Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Well, the, when it came out, people were like, what the fuck? After watching it, I get it. Oh, sure. I get it. Although, like, what, what, I, don't, I don't get, the, that's a whole other topic of why Indiana Jones is kid-friendly. You know what I mean? Kids like, cause, cause like, kids like violence. Ac action, adventure, and action violence, and adventure. Yeah. I don't think kids are as bothered, a lot of kids are as bothered by violence as adults around them seem to be worried they will be. Sure. Technically, The Flamingo Kid was the first rated PG-13 movie, but it was on the shelf for five months before being released, and what got released before it was the second PG-13 rated film, uh, Red Dawn, which is actually technically the very first released PG-13 rated film. So this movie is great. I love it. It's fun. It's trash. It gets shit on more than it deserves. It's probably still my third favorite Indiana Jones movie. Even though, I say it's my third favorite, even though I will say I like the action set pieces more than I like the action set pieces in Last Crusade. That's fair. Eh, 
there's a couple, there's a, there's a... Last Crusade was, is redeemed for me because I, I, probably my favorite action scene in the Indiana Jones movie is the tank, tank. battle yeah. at the end of that. And that makes that movie for me. Uh, yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a handful of good uh, set pieces in, in Last Crusade. I think <laughs> I just, I just don't like it because it's a retread of Nazis want a thing. Yeah. Uh, plot yeah. and 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 I I I don't really want characterization out of Indiana Jones. <laughs> I, I, it took it to a new level. It took it to like a real movie level. When this is when Temple of Doom is like schlock serialized action hero man comedy violence. It takes it. Out this is of, a B movie. Yeah. Basically. It it takes it out of the serials homage yeah. once you do the characterization with Indiana Jones. I don't go to an Indiana Jones film for humanity. I don't go to an Indiana well, Jones I mean, film for but, convincing father-son relationships. But if it I isn't, go for it, action and stunts. But yeah, Indiana Jones and the, the, I mean, the the bridge at the end. It's a fun ending. Th that's that's great. And and the cool part, I think I like about that, um, is that that was a real bridge. Um, it wasn't an old, like, uh, rope, like, no, it had like bridge. steel cable it, it underneath mid, yeah. the, the hemp rope they used. But. Right, and I think they cover either covered it, the production covered it to make it look like it was made of rope or it had that on there, I don't know, but um, it wasn't a visual effect. Mm -hmm. And they were all really on that bridge. And Spielberg was like scared of heights and he didn't want to go out very far on it and so was the cinematographer. But <laughs> like he, the, you know, Harrison Ford like ran across it, like he didn't give a shit. And, <laughs> and so it, uh, they, and they really snapped it. They set explosives to blow the, um, the steel cable apart and they put the dummies on there and they're the famous dummies that we love so much <laughs> to where my mind was blown when I'm like, those aren't real guys falling. <laughs> like they took dumb, like they took mannequins and gave them like cheap, uh, you know, yeah, circuit. Servo. Um, servo, yeah. Like run on like a, a nine volt battery. Like the arms go like this. <laughs> and then they put them all on the bridge and they blew it up and they filmed it from 24 different angles and all these dummies fell and they all look so real. <laughs> and it's so great. Some of the later shots aren't so great. <laughs> and then they cut to shots of like alligators eating like I don't know, pieces of chicken or something. They just throw like a... Uh, Cow uh, wrapped in red fabric. Th there's not even that much meat or gore. It's just like the fabric of the, the dead guys, you know? Yeah. They could have thrown some dummies in there that were just like made of like hamburger meat. They kind of make that PG rating, uh, Mike. They kind of make that PG rating. <laughs> um, they, they, yeah, so it can't get too graphic, but <laughs> they filmed those, those alligators in like Florida and then the the bridge was in, I think it was in Sri Lanka or somewhere. And then the- Weren't there two? Wasn't there like a real bridge? Then they did one that was close to the ground. Yeah, there was a yeah. set that yeah. was in London. So famously they say that that whole sequence was shot on three different continents. And the idea that Indiana Jones is in the middle of a bridge and there's bad guys on either side of him and he has no option but to cut it in half <laughs> is so like iconic and, and epic. And awesome. So there's an Indiana Jones solution to a problem. I don't know. Uh, yeah. What do you do? Yeah, what do you do? Improvise. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna cut the bridge. Chao Chi, La Tsutanta. Like that whole that editing, the music, the like the doo -doo 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 -doo, it's, like the drums. It's also made better by the fact that you know what he's gonna do before he does it too. Right. Yes, yes. It's the moment before when 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 Willie's screaming, "Oh my God!" They're tying them yeah, to the yeah. end. The anticipation, anticipation makes it. Yeah, the bad guys don't know, and Indy knows, and uh, th this is a great movie. I love it. I don't care if it's uh, offensive or whatever. <laughs> they, they eat bugs and snakes. They're just like, we wanted a crazy scene. And everyone's like, well, it's offensive to the culture. The Indians would never eat that. And I'm like, of course they wouldn't. What, what I want to know, Mike, yeah. is how did Indiana Jones get his jacket back at the end of the movie? Oh, sure, yeah. How did that happen? They're, they're also like they're clean <laughs> when they show up at the village, you know? Like, I mean, they were a fucking wreck when they left and they show up and yeah, he's got all of his stuff. He's got his leather jacket. 
They probably threw that in the lava. I know. He was shirtless. Yeah. And then... He stopped, you know, before the rescue of the kids, he did stop to get the hat. Yeah. He needed the hat and the shirt at least. He got his clothes was bare minimum. It was in that little room where he was laying on the rock bed with all the candles around him. And maybe it was in that room. He's like, hold on, before I rescue all these ch child slaves, I've got to stop in the, in the scream room. Oh, he, he, well, after he got rescued from the bridge with the British soldiers, he like told the captain, you got to drive me back to the palace. Yeah. I got to get my jacket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got I to gotta get my jacket. Spielberg magic. Okay. <laughs> Editing, magic editing. They're literally, yeah, the, the British come and they, they show up along with like Indian forces, yeah. um, the yeah. national forces that um, aren't part of the red and black thuggy cult. Thuggy cults are real, by the way. Yeah. Or the word thuggy, not the cult, but. Uh, I think thug, they were just thieves or something just, though. Yeah, they, were, yeah. they would, they would uh, work in a group. I understand there were, there were many liberties taken with the Indian culture in this film. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So much that the Indian government denied them access to film in India. I mean, You're not filming. Your, you can't use the word Maharaja. Uh, we don't like anything about this movie. So they just filmed in Sri Lanka, which is just a big island off the coast of India. Yeah. So they're like, fuck you. Uh, we're going to exploit your culture to, all the way to the bank. I'll make my own India. But yeah, that's that. It's fun. It gets derided more than it should. It's fun. It's one of those things where it's it's where a lot of the most iconic Indiana Jones stuff comes from, and people just don't acknowledge that. Fortune and glory. And they all talk about raiders. I guarantee you Temple of Doom is going to be better than the new one. I haven't seen it yet. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know if Gen Z sees it the same way. Like, Star Wars has had staying power, but when I was a kid, it felt like Indiana Jones was just as big, and for me personally, bigger than Star Wars. Yeah, I was, bigger, I was Indiana yeah, Jones yeah. on like multiple different Halloweens. I went as Indiana Jones. And yet, I'm not hyped about the new one. Like the hype for Indiana Jones just died. Well, it's a very different thing. It's now he's a character, and now he's 80 years old, and it's different. Yeah. He's not Adventure Man. I talked about this in the play. I, I, I know, it's, it's I know. Just like, it's a different thing, and he's not a character. So when, or he shouldn't be. He shouldn't be. And so when you when you remove the 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 best parts, is that he's an unknown archaeologist adventure man who has action set pieces, and you make him an elderly character, it doesn't work. So that's our uh, our discussion about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I'm surprised we didn't do this earlier. This is like the movie. <laughs> This is one of two movies that just like shaped my brain. It's this and, and Empire. It's weird that we haven't done any of them. I mean, it's like it's like they're so, they're so too part obvious. Of me, yeah, too obvious that I. It's like, yeah, why? <laughs> too obvious. <laughs> but uh, it's it's really there's a new one coming out, and it seemed like the appropriate time. So. We're cashing in on that dial of destiny a hype? Yeah, all that, all that yeah. hype. <laughs> We're riding on that gravy train. I hear it's going to be great. I can't wait. Check it out. Go watch the original Indiana Jones trilogy and don't worry so much about the fact that it's offensive. <laughs> Just fucking stop already. Just fucking stop already and watch the movies and stop. Turn that part of your brain off that gets offended by fucking everything. I just don't care anymore. I'm just gonna go listen to my Cannibal Corpse album <laughs> on my, my uh, 1912 Victrola. <laughs> See how it sounds. Check out the sound quality. I wanna hear those growls coming out of that. You should have joined a death metal band, Mike. That's the one takeaway from that video. You were born to be a death metal singer. You missed your calling. I did, I really did. It's not too late. No, it's not. It's never too late. Yes, just, it's just... too late.